Well, good morning everybody. Ring-a-ding-ding! -ding. It's the first day of spring and it's a lovely day outside. For I just want to get out there and have another kick of the footy. It's uh, looking magnificent. So, welcome to spring. So hopefully everything's uh, turning around for us. Um, I first like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Kuei Wurrung people, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So it seems to be all happening in the media at the moment. Uh, this Sunday, Mr Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, is going to make some announcements about our roadmap back through the restrictions. So uh, we'll hopefully have some more information about what is happening at the moment. Um, in our current operations guide, we are out for the rest of the term, unless there's some announcements made um, on Sunday uh, that change that. But it uh, looks like we will um, have some restrictions coming off in the not too distant future, which is... Uh, fantastic job by everyone so thank you um, to everyone for doing all those right things like hand sanitizing washing hands social distancing and wearing your good old face masks so keep up the good work um, we've uh, done a great job here in Mortlake and district and we want that to continue um, reminder that we've got a curriculum day this Friday we're just having a a switch off, chance to gather our breath. Um, so we won't be having any supervision at school. There's uh, no one will be here. Um, teachers um, won't be going online. Students won't be going online. So just have uh, a day, extra day to chill out um, and recharge on the, over the long weekend. Um, we uh, also. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, we'll be doing our latest um, home deliveries spe specifically for the Prep 1 and 2 students. That'll be your final home delivery of books and hard copy for you starting tomorrow. So thanks to everyone that's been involved with that. Um, look, if, as with anything, if you're having any difficulties, just uh, ring the office, send an email, and hopefully we can... Um, help you out with anything that you need assistance with. But now it's our favourite time of the week that we like to go to most weeks, and that is cooking with Vicky. Over to you, Vicky. Hello there, how are you this week? We're going to make a really lovely naan bread, which can be used on a hot plate or a barbecue hot plate. So we'll get on with what we're going to make here today. So we'll need one cup of warm water, not too hot, not too cold. Doesn't want to kill the yeast. We've got one teaspoon of yeast, dry yeast. Two tablespoons of sugar. One teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of uh, yogurt, and the only yogurt I had was actually vanilla bean yogurt, so it's supposed to be plain, but vanilla bean sounded good. And a little bit of um, olive oil. Now, I'm meaning a little bit as in like a teaspoon, so that was two tablespoons of yogurt. And one egg. And with your whisk, just give it a quick whisk up. Bring all that together. We've whisked our ingredients together. Now it's time to add the flour. So we're going to add the flour to the moisture with this ingre uh, this recipe. So it's got three, uh, two and a half to three cups of flour, plain flour. You could use double O flour if you wanted to, which is a stronger flour. I've added in around about two and a half cups of flour there. And we'll just give it a bit of a mix. We want this to be um, a soft but not sticky dough, so that's still too sticky. So we'll add a bit more flour in, keep a little bit left. You could use a spoon, wooden spoon, a knife. I'm just using the whisk because it was in the bowl. 
uh, and I'll probably think that that's not the best option, okay? Whisk is not the best option. <clears throat> okay, whisk is not the good option, so we're going to cut the flour out of there, the dough. It's always good to actually uh, note to self, don't do that again. Okay. Right, we'll just use the knife, rolling it around. It's feeling very nice and um, soft so far, a nice soft dough. Time to get our hands in. Using our baker's gloves, we call it, a bit of flour into our hands, not too much. And then we'll roll that around. If we think it's too sticky, we'll just have to add a little bit more flour. We're going to just sprinkle our, our bench top a little bit with a, a nice sprinkling of flour, not too much. And the bowl is reasonably clean, so that's good. A bit of a gentle uh, rolling around and now just knead it. Remembering it, if it's too sticky, just put a little bit more flour in there, but we want it to be nice and soft. So knead away and we'll come back in a minute. So we've kneaded it and now it's time to actually rest the dough. So it's in a nice uh, ball. We've got a clean bowl that's been sprayed with a bit of olive oil. We're going to pop our dough in there, roll it around. And that's going to sit covered in a warm, cozy spot for about an hour until it doubles in size. A handy tip when making dough or anything with flour is as soon as you've actually finished um, with your dough, make sure you put your bowl in some nice hot soapy water because it, it'll actually set here if you don't and it's quite hard to actually clean otherwise. So happy washing up. Our dough has been rested for an hour, divided into eight pieces. It could be made into smaller pieces if you wanted to. We've let it rest for a little bit and we went to put it on the stove top and the gas ran out, so I managed to get one cooked one. So you can see that this side's got all the little bubble brown bits of um, where it's bubbled up. So it was quite successful, but then the gas ran out. So we've gone to plan B, because the show must go on. So we've gone into the oven with our hot baking dish. So I'm using a cast iron dish. I've rolled one of my doughs out, oiled it, popped it, Oh, oil down into the oven. It only seems to take a couple of minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it starts to pop up. Okie doke. So it's a little bit slower cooking it in the oven, but it has puffed up like it's supposed to. And we'll just give it a quick flick with a bit of olive oil or melted butter. Give it a quick turn back into the oven and finish cooking it. During these tricky times that we're having, it's really nice that we actually have gorgeous friends around us. One of my beautiful friends just dropped um, some of these pretty, pretty camellias in, which has made me feel so happy. So happiness to all, stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask. See you soon. Well, Vicky, you've done it again. I nearly snuck out and got myself something to eat. But uh, well done. Thank you, Vicky. Um, just a few more little announcements um, coming up. Um, just a reminder, we need to get those forms in um, for next week, week nine, on Thursday for the supervision childcare, um, if you can do that. And just giving you the heads up that that'll probably look a bit fairly different on the last week of term, but I'll explain that uh, in greater detail. I'll have an update and information uh, sheet for parents um, early next week. We'll wait until the Premier's made his announcements and see what information um, changes for school. So we'll get that all out to you early part of next week. So we're into the uh, spring birthdays um, and birthday people having coming up on the 5th we've got Mary Kane happy birthday to you on the 7th Amy Hughes happy birthday 
And on the eighth, we have Regan G, Soraya Guy, and Mia Ritchie all celebrating their birthday. So happy birthday to all those people. Um, it's taken, I've wanted to fit this little segment in just, it's taken me a while and I, I've been holding off until with Mighty Bombers we've uh, finally had a win. Mmm, sweet taste of success in the Mighty Bombers. And it's taken five weeks to get this segment in. But due to popular demand, I've done a Google Forms survey I only had one response because it was with myself. So this is my top five AFL moments that include the Essendon Bombers. Nearly all top five. The first one, you might even learn a bit about me with this top five. Number one, or number five, is the 1972 Grand Final. And that was played between Richmond and Essendon. The highest scoring grand final, 50 goals kicked, 28 to 22. Amazing game. But the reason why that's on the list is I was born at half time that day. So there you go, born on grand final day. Then uh, number two, would uh, number four I should say, is in 2001. So most of the students out there, you weren't even uh, born yet, was round 16. Essendon defeated North Melbourne 171 to 159. But during the second quarter, Essendon was 69 points down and they came back to win the game by two goals. So bad luck, North Melbourne. I still love being you all the time. Round three, uh, halfway through our top five AFL moments, is any time Essendon beat Carlton, Collingwood, West Coast, Hawthorne, North Melbourne... Actually, everyone, I like beating you all. So that's number three. Number four, personal highlight, 1984 and 1985, back-to-back -back grand finals. They were sensational days. And then 93, the Baby Bombers coming through and uh, winning the premiership. So they, they were all fantastic moments in the top five. But the number one highlight, and I have to include it this week, is back in the 2000 AFL Grand Final, Essendon defeated Melbourne. And what a day that was. And it's my other link, personal link to that day, is that I was actually married on that day. Married, on, born on Grand Final Day and married on Grand Final Day, which is a bit weird, I know, but it was because of the Sydney Olympics pushed everything forward. So we had an early September Grand Final. So... I'm actually, tomorrow, I'm married for 20 years. So there you go. Unbelievable. All right. Enough of the uh, history. Let's go to a new segment called Jackie Reads for Us. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. I've got a book to read for you today by Dave Hughes and Holly Ife, and it's called How Not to Annoy Dad. And it's illustrated by Heath McKenzie. How not to annoy dad. Wake dad bright and early to start the day. Dad, is it morning yet? 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 Oh good, you're up. Do you do that to your dad? Make a healthy breakfast with dad. Look dad, I made you breakfast. It's porridge and coffee together. Here you go. Oh, uh, uh-oh. Dad, I know I said porridge, but I meant toast. Dad, I can only eat breakfast with the blue spoon. Have fun with Dad at the park. Dad, not the park with the cafe. This is the wrong park. Dad, look at this spiky stick. I love it. Can you carry it home for me? Got nearly a whole tree. Dad, I need to go to the toilet right now. But I don't know how to get down. Find interesting things with Dad. Look, Dad, cockroaches. I'm going to pat them. Dad, I found an amazing rock, but I dropped it. 
Can you help me find it? Dad, I found a new stick. I don't need that one anymore. Oh, look at all of this. And visit interesting places. Dad, watch how high I can climb the library shelves. Dad, this book has a naked statue on the front. Look! Dad, I need to do a really big poo right now. I hope nobody does that at the library. Play fun family games together. But Dad, I was just about to win. Can we start over? Let me win this time. That's not fair. I hate this game. I want to play hide and seek. Let Dad have some time to himself. Dad, I need to go. Hey, are you looking at your phone while you're on the toilet? Dad, I really need to go. Can I wait on the lemon tree? Dad, I really, really need to go more. Oh, I don't need to go anymore. Can I have your phone? Hope you don't have your phone in the toilet. Relax and watch television with Dad. Dad, I don't want to watch football. I want to watch kids' shows. Not the news, Dad. That's even worse. Dad, I've hidden the remote. You have to try and find it. Use your best manners at dinner time. What do you mean you can't put tomato sauce on fried rice? You can put sauce on anything. Dad, I don't like the vegetables to touch the rice. Can you please keep them very separate? And I need the yellow spoon for dinner. I can't eat my dinner with carrot in it. And you said it's good to share. And she's giving it to the dog. Ask Dad very important questions just before bed. Dad, who would win a race between a cow and a sheep? Dad, what's your favorite bug? And you can't say ladybug, because that's my favorite. Dad, how do I know I'm not dreaming right now? Let Dad have a good night's sleep. Dad, Barkley and I are gonna sleep in your bed, okay? Dad, can I have another glass of water? Dad, can I have a glass of warm milk and one more story? Dad, I'm just going to the toilet again. You gave me too much milk. Be so adorable that Dad can't wait to do it all again tomorrow. Dad, is it morning yet? Happy Father's Day to all the dads and special men in our lives. I hope you have a great day and you don't get too annoyed. Thanks a lot, uh, Jackie. And that's right, everyone have a great father's day on sunday now welcome to our special guest on the couch this week it's to mrs sally partridge so welcome along sally thank you mr forrest uh, all good how have you been going oh, i've been very busy at home i've been very busy obviously teaching and working but i've been doing lots of hobbies oh very good lots of hobbies this time ah, fantastic all right well tell us a bit about yourself all right, well, I'm from Tasmania and I moved over here to Victoria with my family about nine years ago. Just this month in September we moved, nine years ago. Um, I started teaching in Tasmania in 1996. So I should have been teaching for about 24 years, but I get distracted by things, Mr Forrest, and I've been, oh, I've been a travel agent, I've been a news agent, I've been all sorts of things. But when we moved, I came back to teaching because, and I think that's probably the second question, isn't it? Why do I love teaching? Because being with young people all the time, I think it keeps you young yeah, and you're good. always learning. So I yeah. like to learn things from children and to f just find out new things. Well, there you go. There and you. my positive message. Yeah, give us your positive <laughs> message. To follow your passion. Find out what your passion is. And even if it can't be part of your job, make sure you keep your passions going as your hobbies. Yeah, very good. Very sound advice. So thank you for joining us on the couch. My pleasure. And uh, enjoy the last few weeks of term. And we'll, we look forward to seeing 
Mrs. Partridge and, and everyone around at school, hopefully, fingers crossed, start the next term. That would be fantastic. If not earlier, we'd, we'd take that too, but um, it will be great to see everyone out there. So everyone stay safe, keep doing all the right things, have a great Father's Day, and we'll catch you next week. We're, uh, assembly is next Thursday online. We're a, a day out because I've got meetings to go to. They never stop. All right, see you later. Bye.